first weekend of winter. And what are we doing? Another fishing rally. Tell us about what's happening today, Dave. Oh, look, another step in galvanising anglers nationwide. Um, we've got some uh, some very high profile people here today, and it's about um, making sure that we can give politicians a message. Yep. A couple of weeks out and a couple of months out from the big federal election. We've had enough. We have had enough, yep. and it's time to make a stand. What do you reckon? What's your thoughts? Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely time to make a stand. We've been pushed around far too long and it's time to make a difference. Well, you spend a lot of time in the water, it's just serious stuff. It's very serious stuff. It's, um, it, it's times are changing. I think the last 12 months have been very big for us as recreational anglers because 12 months ago, almost, with Dale's help and a lot of other people's help, we showed that as anglers, if we unite, we can do some pretty powerful things. We've yep. got rid of that super trawler. Yep. Yep. This marine park issue, it's on a bigger scale. Huge scale. Huge scale. We're talking Australia wide, we're talking vast expanses of coastline. And but we're not just talking marine, we're also talking terrestrial national parks as well, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's huge. And, and it's, it's just that little thing that once they get that one move in, they keep it's going, a they don't give back. They no. never give back, do they, Lee? No, and so they've got to just take the good areas. It's very important, very yeah. important. So, big day, and this is what it's all about today, so you'll be able to see what's happening. We're a $10 billion industry, and we get treated like a $2 industry. So who's going to be first? Who's going to be the first kid to grab a show bag from me? There we go. Nice orderly queue right there. And I'll hand you out a, a bag. I've only got one hand, so hang on. I might be able to do this two at a time. This could be dangerous. No, here we go. There's two there, so can you separate those for me, Dale? There we go. Good job. All right, I hope you've got a lot of show bags. We've got a lot of kids. <laughs> there we go. All of you people have signed up. I can see you now. And I know who you are. And you're putting your signature on the piece of paper that says, I vote for Australian fishing. And that's what you need to do. And that's what you young kids need to do. When you see trouble on the horizon in the fishing area, come out and stand in the rain with us. And put your fists in the air and say, I want a better go. I want a better shot at the title. Because I want to be able to fish out there. I don't want to be told that I need to drive 200 kilometres down the coast when the fishing is right on my back door. It's what we love about this country, is the freedom to do the things that we love. Yes, there are always going to be rules and laws. And some of those rules and laws are there for a reason. And marine parks, I'm not totally against them. I've seen them work in other countries all over the world. I've seen beautiful marine parks growing countless millions of tonnes of fish for recreational fishers to catch, in New Zealand especially. Even carry on with the best of them. But I know what works and it's people power. And I know what politicians listen to and that's people and families. But to see the enthusiasm of the next generation coming through is absolutely magnificent. But just let me remind you, uh, just looking through some of these faces, I saw a lot of you in the mid-1990s when 10,000 of us marched on the steps of Parliament House and Jeff Kennett looked through the window and said, goodness gracious me, what's going on there? And 87 scallop boats were history in Port Phillip Bay. We now have a multi-million dollar tourism related fishery in Port Phillip Bay where people come from all over the world to see the great phenomenon of spawning fish coming into the bay. We also have angler related bag limits and size limits. These weren't done by the fisheries in a knee-jerk reaction. These were done by organisations like Future Fish and Ver Fish and the angling clubs going to the fisheries saying, we, the anglers, are catching too many fish. It's not good for the fishery and it's not good for our image. So then all of a sudden, after some absolute imbecile started to kiss fish in the early 1990s, people start to release fish. They tag fish and they take kids fishing. Seeing these kids here today warms the cockles of old, this old grandfather's heart because you know, young man, I like kids. You know why? I used to go to school with them and I think they're absolutely fantastic. I see my own two beautiful granddaughters now. My goodness gracious me, do they love fishing and they love getting out and they sit down and they have their whiting and their flathead and it's absolutely magnificent. And this is the type of politicians we want to get the message across to. Now, Adam said something about people making decisions for us. And the best that I can come up 
is rules made by people who hate fishing and only supported by those that can't For fish. Once in my life I can walk amongst people now and say, it's not future fish, it's not fur fish, it's not the talkie angling club, it's not we fish, it's not I fish, it's not F fish, it's not B fish, it's us. And we are the anglers. We are the world. And I can tell you now, if we stick together, there's nothing that gives us more power and energy and people won't take any more notice than a group of people who stand together and say enough's enough. When I say enough's enough in finishing up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I just reiterate what Adam Reuter has said. And he, together with Lee Rayner and the young people here today, they're the future. They are going to be the voice, because I'm getting tired. I've got to go and broadcast football this afternoon because i just got to try and belt out an existence. Because she's taken all my money and given it to those people that don't work, and they're not here today. But I am. And I love fishing, and I love kids, and fishing is a part of this great nation. Let's stick together and say, we demand a fair go. Thank you very much. I don't deny we don't need to look after our fishery. We're just asking for some consultation amongst all of us as anglers. We're the ones who use the waterways. We're the ones who tend to do the most looking after the waterways. We're the ones who want to continue this for the rest of our lives. I want my girls to be able to walk down here and go fishing if they want or go for a swim and not get in trouble. The other problem we find, guys, is no scientific research in a lot of these marine parks. And the other thing we find that when they lock up our areas, they just go to anglers, find out our best spots, lock them up, and then allow other things like commercial fishing to be done right around the borders of the marine parks, which has a huge detriment on those confined areas. We're here today to show our strength, and I think we're at a very exciting time and as much as we don't want to be doing this on a Sunday, it is an exciting time, guys. We've had some big battles in the last four years. And we've shown that as anglers and as general public what we can do. We don't win that. If we do get into government, uh, we're going to have a review of all of the uh, marine parks that have been put down recently. And we'll do it based on two things. Consultation, actually sitting down with the people who take care of the environment, which is yourselves. It's the folks that go out on the water that care what they do, that are actually taking care of the environment, not talking about it, and we'll do it based on science. And it's very simple. We will... I'm proud to see my son Jeremy, who loves fishing. We live near the Barwon River, across the road from a jetty, and it's one of the favourite things that we can do as a family. So can I commend Greg Hunt and Richard Colbeck and Senator Michael Ronaldson who's also here today for listening to Rec Fishers, for listening to families and taking some action. And, and I can only reiterate what Richard and Greg have said today and Rex. Use your people power because three years ago, ladies and gentlemen, we stood here and we fought the ban by the Gillard government against Mako shark fishing. It was a ridiculous ban, not founded on science, driven by pure ideology, driven by politics. And through people power, through your voice, for standing up, we fought that ban and we won. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, we can take this on again and we can win again. So we are united. We are with you, we are standing up for you, and I'm very proud as your local candidate, hopefully as your federal member, after September 14, to continue to fight for you and to stand up for you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that we've organised. All know who I am, all know what I stand for. Um, I like you, I'm just a rec recreational... Thank you, I'm, I'm a recreational fisherman. I get jack of being pushed, I get jack of being told where I can fish, how I can fish, and when I can fish. Especially when there's absolutely no science to it. Where and why and how we can't fish. I remember standing here four years ago with Richard Colbeck and Greg Hunt when we were told we weren't allowed to fish for Makos. And I said then, I'm from Frankston, so if somebody pushes me, I'm gonna push you back. If somebody wants to push all of us, we've all got to push back. Every single one of us. I can't help the rain, so I won't keep you too long.